Cowboys put pick is in. They are officially on the clock on the television side of things, but we can see, of course, with our live shot into the war room that the Cowboys are talking. Lunda Wells is on the phone right now. This part of it, Bobby, in terms of trying to find it. Uh, Yeah, it's got to be a tight end at this point. Lock that in. Look at Lunda. Giddy and stuff. It was always on the table. We talked about it in the first round. We talked about it in the second round. They wanted a tight end, Bobby, and they got one. We just got to figure out who that is. Yeah. I I, I mean, I think Tucker Craft is there. My next two are Schoonmaker at Michigan, and then it's Tucker Craft. And then, like, we, I've got to drop. But I, if, yeah. I, and here comes the Cowboys. Here comes Drew Pearson. Oh, Drew Pearson. Hood, hood. Oh, look, baby. Uh, thank you. They're all excited to hear Drew's announcement. Thank you. As an undrafted free agent, I'm honored to be here in Kansas City for the 2023 NFL Draft. Of course, I come to you as a former Dallas Cowboy, but I also want to honor the legacy of the Kansas City Chiefs and some of its great players like the, old, the, the great Otis Taylor and our original owner, Lamar Hunt. But I'm here to represent the five-time world champion Dallas Cowboys. That's true. And its Hall of Fame owner, Jerry Jones. Yes. Gene Jones and the Jones family. Head coach Mike McCarthy <laughs> and Cowboy Nation. <laughs> With the 58th pick yes. in the 2023 NFL. How about that? (laughs) The newest Dallas Cowboy is the Michigan tight end, Luke Schoonmaker, six foot five, 251 pounds. You talk about a third team all Big Ten tight end. Only four of his 52 receptions the last two seasons went for 25 yards or more. But guess what? He is a blocker. He will get in and he will block. Brian, quick update. We're going to have to step aside in a moment, but I do want to hear about Schoonmaker real fast. Yeah, Schoonmaker, I'll tell you what, they run the ball behind him. When you when you watch Michigan. By the way, it's second Michigan player they've drafted, huh? Back yep. to back here. Just taking the Turner Wolverines. The third. Yeah. So, <laughs> so th- this guy, I mean, he does a really good job of playing on his feet. He had the balance, the base. He's, he could stay in position. He gets some movement as a run blocker. He'll fit. He'll drive. The team runs the ball behind him. He works on all levels. He does a really good job of finishing his block. He'll line up on various spots in the formation. I've seen him play in line, flexed, even wide as a wide receiver. He can point of attack block. He does it various ways. Movement motion, good athlete, route runner. He could get up the field, doesn't labor at all. He's pretty smooth as a player. He makes plays down the field, but especially good in the red zone. He knows how to find that space when the quarterback is on the move. He'll sit down in zones, work across the field, soft, dependable hands. Does a great job of adjusting the ball. Solid catch radius. Respects the way he blocks, but also the way he catches the football. Bobby, you were really high on him in terms of the tight ends that were still available. Yeah, he was the highest one that I had left. And and look, I mean, I, I like Dalton Kincaid. I like Luke Musgrave. And, we, and you know, we can see that Luke Schoonmaker is a good blocker. But I do think that there's some vertical potential here with Schoonmaker. And I think that when you see the the footwork and, and some of the explosiveness off the line of scrimmage, I think he, he can develop into a really good player. And when we talk about the blocking that the Cowboys clearly, clearly won at a tight end, I think he makes a ton of sense. Yeah, I was immediately impressed with how well he moved, but he's a fifth-year senior, and I know that some people will look at him like, oh, he's an older dude, but when you have a – they do have a room that lacks in experience, so I feel like he could come in if you want a guy to be – you know, to contribute right away. He's a guy that's played quite a bit of football. He understands, uh, like like Brian said, he's QB friendly. He will find the spot and come back to the ball for his quarterback. So I, I'm i cool with it. Yeah, you, I love that. Yeah, I'm you, cool you mentioned the blocking ability. I mean, there were times you see him handle ends, you know, one-on-one, yeah. and, and he holds his own. You know, I didn't see a lot of elite speed or quickness, but he does an excellent job of using his size to his advantage and his route running to create separation. To Brian's point, you see him line up in the slot, strong hands. He goes and snags the ball. He will catch it away from his body. You know, an issue with a, a guy like Coons from Old Dominion, I thought he was kind of a double catcher. You know, he'll bring that into his body, it'll doink off, and then he's got to kind of recollect it. Schoonmaker, you don't have to worry about that. This dude's got natural hands. Per- Personally, do I think he's going to start over Jake Ferguson? No, I don't. Wow. Okay, so we'll continue on with reaction about Luke Schoonmaker being picked here at 58th overall to the Dallas Cowboys. Their next selection at the moment 
is at 90. we got a long way to go. We're wrapping up the second round. About to head into round number three. You're listening to the 2023 NFL Draft on 105.3 The Fan and DallasCowboys.com. Okay, so I want to go back to that real quick. Yeah. So one of the the pre-day two conversations was you needed to get a tight end in the second round or the third round because then you, you're you drafting Jake Ferguson. Then you're drafting Peyton Hendershot. They have two young tight ends on the roster who they do feel good about. Sure. But overall, you wanted to get somebody that's a, that has a gap, that has a notable difference what is the notable difference for Schoonmaker? You don't think he's going to start over Jake Ferguson. Why is that? I just don't see the notable difference with Schoonmaker. To me, I mean, he's, is he a far better blocker? He might be a better blocker than Ferguson, but I think both they're very comparable to me coming out. Like, I, I have Schoonmaker and Ferguson to me graded similarly. Uh, is Fergie coming out of Wisconsin and then Schoonmaker coming out of Michigan. Because I think Fergie also showed the ability to line up in the slot. Good route runner. Didn't have elite speed, but he's able to create separation with his route running ability. He's also good, good hands. I think you're getting similar type of players here. And maybe the offense in which Michigan ran didn't get to utilize Schoonmaker's skill set to where we didn't see the productivity downfield. Good player. I like him. I, I don't dislike the pick whatsoever. But I, I don't know that he's necessarily a leap above Ferguson like we would have said Kincaid if they had to taken him would be. What do you think, Brian? I You know, I think the thing with, I think they like Hendershot. Okay, they like both tight ends. I think they think more of Hendershot than they do Ferguson. And and I, I just kind of listening to people talk about, about the two particular players, I've seen like Michigan runs the ball with an attitude. Yes, sure. they do. And I don't see, like when you, when when Schultz was out, when they don't, when they were Cowboys trying to run the ball, run it behind the guys they currently have, I didn't see them have the success that like that Michigan has with running behind Schoonmaker. Agreed. And I feel like that they got the best of both worlds with this guy. They got a guy that can catch the ball down the field, but they got a guy that when they put him in line on that right side next to next to Steele. They know that they're going to get some push at that point of attack. I don't think they have that kind of confidence in Ferguson and Hendershot, and I think that's why they went and got this guy. And I, I think when you talk about the difference, though, between when you say Ferguson and Schoonmaker aren't noticeably different, different to you, Schoonmaker to me is a much better athlete. And, and when you look at the testing at, at his size, I mean, he ran the, the 40 two tenths of a second faster than, than Ferguson. He's got longer speed. This is a guy who's 6'5, 251. His three cone was 6'8'1. I hear you, Bobby. I you, I just didn't see that on tape from Schoonmaker when it came to like a, a drastic athletic difference. You're right, though. Like I see what you're saying, but to me, I think Ferguson showed you in the open field last year. He's able to make plays. I think you've got two guys now that are reliable, and I love what you're saying there, Brian. In terms of he's probably now the best blocker of the three. I don't I just, disagree with that. Yeah, Hendershot's the worst of the three, but he's probably the best pass catcher. It, it, it's it's a, it's you know to me they kind of I felt like that they were going to get a guy. Steve even Jones talked about it, going to get a guy that can try and do both. Yeah. And and Schoonmaker was always the guy to me that, like, like I said, you watch Michigan play and they're hammering people. Mm -hmm. And every single time it's either him in line or him moving across and then hammering somebody off the edge. Mm -hmm.